Welcome to Community Church, and thanks so much for tuning in online. We hope that you enjoy today's message and are encouraged through your time here today. No matter who you are or what's going on in your life, know that we are so glad you're here. Well, good morning once again, everyone. So excited to have you here today and be able to share with you this weekend. Do want to welcome all of our campuses joining us right now at Kempsville, all of our people at Suffolk, God Behind Bars, Manila Campus. So come on, Western Branch, let's welcome everybody joining us here this weekend. And it always is truly an honor and a privilege just to come and be able to share with you guys, Pastor Michael and Megan are just incredible, incredible leaders and pastors of this house and I always appreciate the opportunity that they give us to, to share some things with you throughout the year. Uh, we're doing this series, Whisper, and, and I don't know what you think of when you hear the word whisper and uh, the first thing I thought of a couple weeks ago as I was starting to prepare for this is the word more. And the reason I thought of that is because if you don't know, I have four kids at home and two are teenage girls and two are young boys. And so when I think about all the noise in my house, I'm thinking whisper could be something I could use more of in my life. Um, it would be great to have. Uh, but then even this morning, I don't know what kind of day you've had. I have one of those mornings where you wake up and it seems like anything that can go wrong goes wrong kind of morning. There was stuff where I know where I put it last night, but somehow somebody moved it while I was asleep and I couldn't find stuff. Nothing's where it needed to be. It's raining outside. I never use an umbrella, but I went to grab one. I'm like, I'm gonna use an umbrella today. It looks like it's raining pretty hard. And of course, I grabbed the only one that like half the umbrella works. Um, so then I'm going back in the house to get another one. I'm having conversations with people this morning here, things like the hot water heater went out, the dog is getting sick. So it's been one of those days, I think. I don't know, maybe that's your day. Maybe you're having a great day. Either way, I would say, today is a good day to slow down, get rid of the distractions, and hear what God would have to say. So let's pray together as we get started. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. And God, we do pray right now that while we know your voice is a real thing, that it would speak clearly to each and every one of us here today. God, that you would use this time to let us know who you are and the life you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're doing Whisper, and we started off this weekend kind of calling it So Many Voices. So Many Voices in Our Lives. And here's kind of the heart of what I want you to get uh, here today. One of the most important things you'll ever have in your life is hearing the voice of God and that every one of us should want to hear the voice of God because the voice of God is what helps lead us to living fully alive. And that's kind of the heart of what I want to get today, that we should want to hear the voice of God. And I will tell you from my, from my life personally, it made a tremendous difference to me when I got to this place where I said, you know what, out of all the things I could listen to, God, I want to listen to you more than anything else. It radically changed my life and the life of my family and the future that I'm living now. And I will tell you, I know that's true for you and it's true for hundreds of people I've seen through the years of doing ministry. So important that we get this right throughout this series, what it means to hear God's voice. The problem is there are so many other voices. The problem is there are so many other things in our life that we are listening to that we hear often and that distract us from what God might have to say. You think about simple things that we live in a culture where you have music and you have TV and you have the radio and you have you know, politics and movies and social media and all these things that you're surrounded with each and every day. And then there's, there's other people in our life, our, our family and our friends and our neighbors and our coworkers and our classmates and all these other people that want to get our attention to have things they want to say to us. There's even ourselves that get in the way sometimes because we're constantly saying things to ourselves. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not so good. Sometimes they're true that we need to hear. Sometimes they're lies we keep telling ourselves. And then there's God's voice, which very often can be the last voice on the list if it makes the list at all. And so we think about all these major voices in our life and, and how different directions they come from and how distracting they can be, and it gets in the way of what maybe God would have to say. And I remember when I started following uh, Jesus years ago, uh, I was in this place where I was really uh, as all in as you can be, just wanted everything I could get from God and what the life he would have for me. And I'm in one of our community groups, and, and at the time I, I was an incredible sports fanatic, like I was... Anything to do with sports, I knew it. Uh, I would watch ESPN for hours at a time. It didn't matter what sport it was, what team it was, what player it was. I knew everything about it. I knew every stat they had. People would literally call me and go, hey, I'm trying to find out what's the stat, what, what happened in that game last night? I'm like, oh yeah, it was this time, it happened at this time, this end and this one. And I just knew all these, because I, I was just, it was, I was all about it, I loved it. And we're sitting in a group and we're talking about getting closer to God. And I remember saying, I was like, yeah, I want to get closer to God, but you know, we're all just so busy and I wish I just had more time. And one of my friends 
And the group says, well, you know, if you spent about half the time with sports as you do now, you'd have all the time you need for God. And I'm like, you know, he's crazy. Uh, we're not friends anymore. I didn't like that at all. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I just feel like he didn't know what he was talking about. No, so no, really, like we're good friends, and I actually appreciate, even though it hurt a little bit, that I would have someone who's speaking to my life honestly, right? And I had to really sit back and go, well, if I guess if I only watched three hours of ESPN today, then maybe I'd have a little more time to see what God would have to say. And I had to make some changes in my life. Not that there was anything wrong with what I was doing, other than that it was getting in the way of what God was trying to say and speak into me. And it happens for so many of us all the time. And so I think all of us have to take time and think about and reflect what are some things maybe we need to turn the volume down a little bit on in our life so we could hear what God would have to say. And, and maybe for some of you, I thought of a few things that I think a lot of us can relate to. Maybe there's some apps on your phone you might need to go home and delete today because they're just taking a whole lot of, of your time and speaking into your life a whole lot. Maybe there's some things on TV you need to spend less time watching. Maybe you could even consider, and just consider, this is your decision to make, canceling Netflix or Hulu or Sling so that you don't binge watch as much as you do now. Uh, I know that's extreme, maybe you shouldn't do that, but maybe you should think about it. <laughs> consider it, just consider it, right? Because it takes a lot of our time. Social media, maybe you need to limit some of your social media use. It's a great thing. But when you spend hours a day scrolling Instagram and scrolling Facebook and watching YouTube videos, maybe you're missing out on something God would have to say for your life. And then even just think about the things that you do listen to. Who do you listen to and why do you even listen to them? Because I'm just going to be honest. I thought about this this past week, that it's just a reality in our culture right now that Nearly everyone in our culture, we're in a place right now where nearly everyone feels like they have his or her voice that should be heard by everyone else, and most of those people actually have very little to say. But yet we, get, we give them their, our attention all the time. And every time we give our attention to something else, every time we hear all these other things going on in our life, and we start to get overwhelmed and drowned about all these other things, God's over on the side, and he's whispering things to us that are super and significant for our lives, but we can't hear it. We may not even know that it's happening. Maybe your life is just too busy and you need to slow down. And I would say this, maybe your life isn't too busy. Still doesn't mean it's not too loud. Because loud and busy aren't the same thing. So what are the things that we hear? What are the things that we listen to? What are the voices that get our attention the most? Where can we slow down? Where can we make Chris some space and some margin and even create some silence in our lives so that we could hear what God would say to us? I think about how intentional it takes for that to happen. I remember when my wife and I, Amanda, first started dating years ago, and uh, right after we started dating, she got an opportunity at her job to go to Germany for a special project. She was going to be gone for six months. We even contemplated, should we even kind of stay together because we'd only been dating for a couple months, and she's going to be gone for six. We said, hey, we'll see what happens. And, and during that time, we knew we had to be intentional. And so even though she was in Germany, and this was back before cell phones were a common thing, I called up the local company and on my phone company, on my, on my home phone with the touch tone, and I said, hey, I'm going to need some kind of deal because I'll be calling Germany on a regular basis. And so I got this special deal that they gave me. Uh, I had to get a second job to pay my phone bill for the next six months. <laughs> But I would call every day, even with the time difference. We were very intentional that we would talk twice a day. And I would call her at certain times twice a day, and we would just get on the phone. Why? Because we knew how important it was that we heard each other's voice. We knew how important it was that while she was, had things going on in her life and had things going on in my life, that we stay connected and that we were intentional to hear what each other would have to say and not lose track of one another. It's what makes a relationship strong. And we got through those six months, and I would say even, doing, even though we were apart physically for six months, we actually cl grew closer together because maybe we were even more intentional while we were apart than sometimes when we were together. And I will tell you what's made the last 18 years of our marriage work so well is not just that we listen to each other, but we made a decision long ago that we're going to listen to the voice of God more than anything else. Good. And we, we've, we've done everything we can to stay true to that, and every year our marriage gets better. We're in year 18, and I've said this to numerous people over the last few months, this has been the best year we've ever had. And it's because we know that if we continue to listen to what God would have to say for our lives, it will just get better. 
but it takes intentionality. In fact, I want you to write this down because I want you to know how real this is for your life, as true as it is for mine. God's voice is real, still speaks, and is the most important voice in our lives. His voice is real. God is still speaking. He's never stopped, and it is the most important voice in our lives. Think about this for a moment. I'll give you a little bit of a history lesson with God. Without the voice of God, anything that is significant about life would not even exist today. It is the power and the voice of God that makes existence even what it is. In Genesis chapter 1, the very first book of the Bible, the very first chapter of the Bible, it says God said. And when God speaks, things happen. It says God said, he said, let there be light, and there was light. And then he kept, continued to speak, and there was the earth, and there was the sky, and there was the sea, and there were the animals, and there were the plants. Every time he spoke, something would come into existence. And then in verse 26, he says this, then God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. It goes on in verse 27 to say, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We are living and breathing and have our being because of the power and the voice of God. He started at the beginning. He spoke. He hasn't stopped. <laughs> He's still speaking. When he speaks, miraculous things happen. That was just the beginning. That was just in chapter 1. He goes on, and all throughout the Bible, from, from Genesis all the way to the end of it where Revelation is, he continues to speak. And he speaks to hundreds of people throughout the Bible that we read about. And each and every time he spoke into someone's life or he said something to someone, it changed the trajectory of what history would become. It was life changing. It was history changing. Each and every time he would speak to someone. When Jesus was on the earth, then he would speak. He said to the seas, be calm. He said to the winds, be still. He said to sickness, go away. He said to demons, flee. He said to the dead, rise. And each and every time it actually happens. Because that's the power of the voice of God. He's still doing that. He hasn't stopped. He's speaking. He has so much he wants to say, and there's so much he wants to do with the power of his voice in our lives. But so often God is speaking, and his words get missed <laughs> because there's so many other voices in our lives that we're listening to. I love what Batterson said in the book Whisper. He said, is it possible that what we perceive to be relational, emotional, and spiritual problems are actually hearing problems? Ears that have been deafened to the voice of God. And it's that inability to hear his voice that causes us to lose our voice and lose our way. Is it possible that our problems aren't really problems, they're just hearing problems? Because if we would hear what God would have to say about them, it would change them. Here's what it says in Revelation 3, 20. This is Jesus, and he says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Jesus is saying he wants to be a part of our lives. He says, I'm standing right here. I just want to be a part of what's going on in your life. I want to share it with you, but you have to give me some space. You have to allow me in. You got to give me some room to work, and it's no different with his voice. If you want to hear the voice of God, if you want to hear what he has to say, you have to answer the knock. If you want to hear his voice, you have to answer the knock. You have to say, God, come on in. I want to hear what you would have to say for my life. Which means you have to open the door to what he's saying and maybe close the door to some other voices in your life so that you can make some room and actually hear what he would say. I mean, I think about if we want to live fully alive, if we want to experience all that God would have for our lives, if we want to have God's help, which is the greatest help we could ever have in any situation or circumstance, if we want those things, then we at some point have to remove some of the other stuff and say, God, come in. Speak. What do you have to say to me and for my life? It's the bold prayer Pastor Michael mentioned in the video that we see in Scripture in 1 Samuel 3, 9. It says, so Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That is a statement and a prayer that would change your life. 
When you slow down enough and remove all the other distractions and get into this place and you say, God, here I am in this moment. Say what you need to say. Tell me what I need to hear. I'm listening. Because I believe what you have to say is more important than anything else that could be said in my life. It will change who you are. It will change the life you live. It will change the future that you have. So often we go through life and we're struggling and it's so easy uh, for most of us that we get to this place where we're struggling and we're having a situation or a circumstance we're going through and it's difficult. And in those moments, we tend to find ourselves stepping back and go, okay, God, I need you right now. Right? And when we say, I need you right now, sometimes we go, oh, well, I'm stopping and I'm asking God for help, but I can't tell that he's listening. Can I tell you part of the reason is because he may be answering, you're just not used to what his voice sounds like. And he's trying to talk to you and he wants to help you. And when you get to learn the voice of God, when you get to understand what it sounds like and you get used to hearing it, then you start to have all the help you'll ever need in life. In fact, I wrote it like this just to simply help us remember hearing God's voice equals having God's help. When we can hear God's voice, then we know we're going to have God's help and there's nothing we will ever face that we can't overcome with him. It's learning to hear his voice. And over the next four weeks, we're going to spend some time specifically talking about what are the ways we hear God's voice. What are some of the specific ways that God would speak to us and how can we get accustomed to what that voice sounds like and making space to hear his voice in that way. But here's some things I want you to hear uh, today. Uh, Again, the heart of this is that the day we would decide, I want to hear God's voice. I want to make space for him, even though there's so many other voices in my life. Because knowing God's voice helps us discover who we are, helps us discover the life he wants for us, helps us see the potential of all that our life could be. Here's some of the power of his voice. I wrote a few of these down. His voice is love. His voice is power. His voice is healing. His voice is wisdom. His voice is joy. His voice is peace. His voice is comfort. His voice is guidance. And we're just scratching the surface of the power of God's voice and what he can speak into our lives. And I don't think there's one of us that if we go through that list and go, I don't need those things. (laughs) We'd all say, yes, I need that. I need joy. I need peace. I need comfort. I need power. I need all these things in my life. Well, where do we get it? We get it from the voice of God because when he speaks, miraculous things happen. And we want that in our lives. But what's interesting, and the reason I think we don't understand how God is speaking often is because we misinterpret how God speaks. 1 Kings chapter 19 gives us a little insight to how God speaks speaks and where his voice is at. This is Elijah having another encounter with God. And he says, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by. A mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Why did he go out to the entrance of the cave when he heard the gentle whisper? Because he knew that was where God was. Isn't it incredible to think that in all the, the loud, booming, forceful things, you would expect the God of the universe, that's how he speaks. But no, it's in the gentle whisper is where his presence was at. Elijah knew that. He recognized it. And I would say that sometimes we think that God only speaks in this loud, booming way, but that's not his typical way of speaking. In fact, I would tell you that sometimes when things in our life are the loudest, when when we're going through difficulties, when we're going through struggles, when we feel like the world is crumbling around us, when the world feels like an earthquake or a fire is hitting, a lot of times we'll go, well, God, where are you at? What's happening? And I will tell you, God's not in that. Why? Because God's in the whisper. The loudness is all that other stuff. God's in the whisper. The dictionary says whisper is this, speaking very softly, using one's breath without one's vocal cords. It's a very intentional, soft word that you use when you whisper. 
Here's the reality about whispers. We're drawn to them. We're drawn to whispers. Something that's loud and booming may get our attention, but we're not necessarily drawn to that moment. Something, when you hear a whisper, your ears, they perk up and you lean and you're like, what is that? I'll give you an example. In my house, I have two teenage girls and I will tell you that, that with two teenage girls, they laugh and giggle about who knows what all the time. And they're talking about all kinds of stuff all the time. And 99% of the time, whatever they're laughing and giggling or talking about, I'm just not really paying a whole lot of attention to because I don't even know if I want to know what they're laughing and giggling about most of the time. And so I just kind of just do my thing. However, in any moment, I notice them whispering, I'm very intrigued right now. <laughs> now I'm very, what is happening, right? You can laugh and giggle all day, but when you start whispering to one another, I'm like, what's going on over here? Now I want to hear what's happening. We're drawn to a whisper. Why? Because when somebody whispers, there's something intimate. There's something quiet. There's something specific going on right now. We know that. Innately, we know like what is going on. And even in a whisper uh, with my kids, whether it's my girls or my, or my younger boys, when I have these moments where one of my kids will come to me and say, hey, Dad, can I talk to you for a minute? And which doesn't happen often. I wish it happened more, but they'll have those moments. They want to talk about something. And I'll say, sure. And I will tell you that in those moments when my kids come to me, it's always been true. Anytime they've approached me because they want to talk about anything of importance, they always talk quietly and softly. They never yell that stuff. It's always like, hey, Dad, here's what's going on. Or I wanted to ask about this. And it's always just quiet, soft, and kind of an intimate voice that they use in those moments. And I will tell you that if I didn't remove all the other voices in that moment, Maybe the TV's on, maybe the radio's playing, maybe I got my phone in front of me. If I don't remove all those things and quiet down, there's some things that they say to me sometimes, I would miss out on some of the most intimate and personal and memorable moments of my life with my kids if I didn't slow down to hear the whisper of what they might want to say in that moment. And it's the same with God. He wants to talk to us. He wants to say things. He wants to speak into our lives. And so often he's trying to get our attention. He's like, hey, Hey, this, I, wanted, I wanted to tell you what's, hey, here's what you need. Here's what you, it, it, what, you're not listening. <laughs> what you, and we're like, well, where's God? But you're listening to all this other stuff. He's speaking and you don't even see it. It's amazing what God can do in you, maybe in someone else, or maybe in both of you in a situation, when you actually start to get sensitive to the voice of God and hear what he would say. I will tell you that uh, there's, there's this one particular moment a few years ago that uh, has just resonated with me, and it, it always will. Just a simple morning. Uh, I usually have a little bit of a routine where I get up and take the kids to school, or, and then I'll, I'll head to a coffee shop, grab a coffee, whether I go to the drive-thru or actually go in, and, and I'll, I'll do some reading. Uh, and sometimes I'll stay at the coffee shop. A lot of times, if it's nice, I'll go to a local park, and I'll just park at a park and sit out on the picnic table and just do some reading that morning before I kind of start my day. And this particular morning, it was kind of nice. I was going to go to a park. So, so I'm headed to the park, and I'm sitting in a car, and, and I'm sitting at a stoplight, and I'm sitting there, and, and the, the radio's not even on. I remember just sitting there, kind of just going to the park. And you should go to the coffee shop today. Oh, uh, okay. And I'm sitting there. It's like, you, you need to turn around and go to the coffee shop right now. And I remember hearing other people tell me about these inside conversations they would have with God sometimes. And I'm sitting there going, no, I don't, I don't think I did need to. I kind of know that I want to go to the park right now, and I'm going to do some reading, and it's going to be great, and it's, it's a nice day. And was, no, you should turn around and go back to the coffee shop right now. Uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to. And in a moment, I finally I caught myself arguing with, at the moment, I wasn't sure if it was myself or God. <laughs> And so then I had to go, what is happening right now? So I'm sitting at the stoplight, and this is as true as the story can get. I'm praying, God, is, is that you, or what is happening right now? And the light turns green. I'm like, whatever. I take off, and I keep going. And before I get to the next light, you need to go to the coffee shop right now. Okay, maybe it's you, God. And so I, hit, so I make the turn, and I head back to the coffee shop. I really don't know what's happening right now, but I'm just... Okay, maybe this is you, God. I'm going to try to listen. So I go in, I grab a coffee. It's nice outside, so I'll go outside and have a seat. I'll pull out the book that I'm going to read. Don't know why I'm even here. So I start reading. About two minutes after I begin reading the book, some guy walks out of the door, and he goes, hey, what are you reading? I was actually reading a book about how to get closer to God, <laughs> which is why I was really iffy about, God, is this you right now? Because if I was just been reading a lot of it. So I said, well, I'm reading a book about how to get closer to God. He's like, really? Well, how's that work? And he just starts asking these questions. <laughs> And so in that moment, I'm like, that's why I'm here. 
I'm going to tell this guy about Jesus. It's going to be awesome, right? And so, okay, so now I'm getting a little bit excited. And he starts asking me all these questions. We start talking. Um, he says, so are, do you go to church somewhere? I'm like, yeah, I go to community church. It's right down the road. And I'm putting on the sales pitch. I'm like, I'm so excited. He goes, okay, that's great. Yeah. Um, he starts asking more questions. We're in this like five-minute conversation. And then finally he goes, he goes, so what do you do? Oh, I'm a pastor at the church I was telling you about. He goes, a pastor? Well, what is that like? What is that life like? What do you do? You know, it's the typical question. You get, what do you do all week when you're a pastor? <laughs> you show up on Sunday and it's great. <laughs> and so, I, so I'm telling him, like, well, I'll do this and I deal with it and I deal with families during the week and I go kind of with this litany of stuff, just, hey, it's cool, it's kind of light. He goes, do you like it? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's great. He goes, does it ever get hard? And uh, I said, yeah. I said, there's been so many times. It's been really, really hard. I mean, there's times where I've even considered just doing something else because it gets discouraging sometimes. It gets frustrating. You feel like you're not where you're supposed to be. You don't feel like you have enough to offer. You don't feel like you don't know what to say to people. You don't feel like people are responding. You're like, why am I even in this situation? And there's moments you go through seasons where it's really hard. He goes, so what do you do? I said, I remember who God is. He put me here. I'm going to trust him to keep me here. I'm going to trust him to get me through this. He goes, really? And so I just start kind of explaining that a little bit. And then I look back up and he's got tears Literally, like almost weeping, coming. I'm like, and then I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's my thing. <laughs> and and he's, he's, I'm like, are you okay? Like, what's going on? He goes, well, I don't know why you decided to be here today, but I'm so glad you are. I'm actually a pastor at a church from about an hour from here. And I've been going through a really, see, this is my thing, this is where I cry. <laughs> He can't take my thing. He, said, this, he says, I've been going through a really difficult time. And I turned to my wife last night and I said, I can't do this anymore. It's too hard. I'm going to resign from my church today. He said, the reason I'm in town is I'm meeting with another friend of mine, a pastor, to help me figure out the best way to transition out of leading the church that I'm leading. I just couldn't do it anymore. He says, but I was driving here this morning and I'm just telling God, I, I don't know what to do right now. And if I'm making a mistake, you just got to really show me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, that no matter how hard it gets, that you're God and you're going to see me through this, that you brought me here and you'll take me through this because I can't handle this anymore. He says, basically, everything you just said is what I asked God I needed to hear. He said, thank you. Now I know I can't quit. I'm going to tell my friend, help me figure this out. I'm sitting at a stoplight, <laughs> right? Rewind a little bit. You should go to the coffee shop. I don't want to go to the coffee shop. This is... And then this happens. This is one of those moments you hear a story like that and you go, well, that never happens to me. Yeah, it does because God is still speaking. God still has something to say and God still wants to do something in you and through you and he's not done. We just have to get where we listen to the voice of God where we recognize what he would have to say and actually respond to it to see what would happen. And it's incredible when we do. I would tell you, write this down, it's really what was on my heart this week, get drawn into the whispers of God and get drawn into the relationship and the life he desires for you. Get drawn into the whispers of God, just like if somebody was around you in the same room and they're whispering, and you're like, oh, I wonder what's going on. Get like that with God, where every time he speaks, you want to know what he has to say. Get drawn into it, and get drawn into the life that he wants for you. It's incredible. Don't miss out on what God would want for your life because you were too busy listening to some other voice. There's so many of them, but none are more significant than God's. I love this statement. If you aren't willing to listen to everything God says, eventually you won't hear anything God says. If you're not willing to start listening to everything God would say for your life, eventually you'll start missing out on anything he has to say. It's intentionality. It's a desire. It's a want to. And we have to get this over this series. God, I want to hear your voice for my life. Have you ever had this statement said to you or maybe you said it to somebody else, you only hear what you want to. 
right? Ever heard that before? You've said it, somebody said it about you. I drive my wife crazy at home because that's kind of me sometimes. When I'm at home, I'm just doing whatever. She's, she's mama and she's super intentional to make sure she knows everything that's happening in our house. I feel like she could be three zip codes away and still know everything we said. And then she yells at me because I'm three feet away and have no clue what just happened, right? I don't know how many of you can relate to either side of that, but, but that's how it goes in our house sometimes. But I love what she shows me, the, the intentionality that she has. And here's what happens all the time. I'm constantly missing out on important details of our family because I'm thinking what people are talking about isn't really important right now. She never does. Hey, did you know this was happening? Did you know that was happening? This was going on and that's going on. I'm like, I didn't know anything about that. She said, you were standing right there when we talked about it. <laughs> you only hear what you want to hear. We got to want to hear. We got to want to know. The life God's trying to help us live out and experience. Have we become deafened to his voice? Because we've decided we just don't need to hear his voice or there's just so many other voices in our life. At the end of the day, I think the reason God whispers is just like we would with people in our life. He whispers because he wants to be close. He whispers because he wants closeness. He could easily yell everything he wants us to hear and we would hear it. But God's not after just passing along information. He's after a relationship. He wants to be close. God is consistent. God is pursuing us. God is after our heart. God is after a meaningful relationship and wanting to be a part of our life. He doesn't intend to get that by yelling everything we need to hear at us. He wants to draw us in with his still, small voice. James chapter four, verse eight, it says, come close to God and God will come close to you. God wants closeness. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, we love this verse, this passage, it says so much. It says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely. And lightly, God wants company with us. He wants relationship. He wants to share life with us. When we start to hear God's voice in our life, we'll start to unleash God-sized dreams of things he wants to do in us. We'll start to unleash purpose that he has for us. We'll start to see miracles happen. We'll start to find identity we've never known apart from him. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Here's what it says in John 10. We'll close with this this morning. John 10, one through five, it says, I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of the sheep, sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and they come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. You want to know how to experience all that God has for your life? You want to know how to get to this place where you can say, I know what it means to live fully alive. I know that my life has meaning and my life has purpose and God is not done with me. The closer I get to Jesus, the more I'll recognize his voice. The more you hear God's voice, the more it will change your life. The closer I get to Jesus, the more I will recognize his voice. It's no different. You know this, whether it's a parent or or a kid of yours or a sibling or somebody you're very close to. You can be in a crowded room, but as soon as you hear their voice from across the room, you know they're there. Why? Because you know them. You recognize their voice, even in a crowded room. That's what God desires, that the sheep would know his voice and follow him. There's some things in our life today we probably need to run away from so we can experience more of what God has for us, but we won't know where to run away from unless we know what to run toward. And we don't know what to run toward unless we know the voice we should be following. We've got to recognize his voice. We've got to know what it sounds like. Today, our focus is that with so many voices, so many voices in our lives, 
that we would know his voice is real. <laughs> he is still speaking and his voice is the most important voice in our lives. And if we would simply be bold enough to say, speak, for I am listening, we would hear our futures unlock because that's what God does. His voice is power. It starts with knowing the one who speaks, with knowing who Jesus is. And just like the sheep would say, I will follow, the sheep follow the shepherd's voice. Why? Because they not only know his voice, they know his voice, but they trust him. They know anything the shepherd would say and anywhere the shepherd would lead them is the best thing for their life. They absolutely trust the shepherd with everything in them. I'm gonna follow you wherever you say to go. I'm gonna do whatever you say to do because I know that's the best thing for me because you only have my best interest at heart. Jesus is saying the same thing. That's who I am. I have your best at heart. I only want the best for you. I wanna show you so much. I wanna tell you so many things. I want you to experience more than you could ask, think, or imagine is what his word tells us. He says, but if you would listen and follow until then, you'll never know what that is. We have to decide, I want to hear what you have to say, and I can't hear your voice if I don't even know who you are. Jesus, I need to know who you are. I need you in my life. I want to trust that what you have is best for me, and I want to hear your voice each and every day to guide me in this life. Would you close your eyes with me this morning? Maybe today is the day that you you decide, you know what? I need to know who Jesus is. As important as his voice is, I can't know his voice if I don't know him. And, and that today you believe, saying that your life is best left in the hands of Jesus. Maybe today you're ready to be bold and say, I want to know you and I want to trust you. And God, I want to hear what you would have to say for my life. If that's you this morning, I'm going to ask that you just, with a with just a little bit of boldness in you right now that you would just lift hands and say, ask me, God, I want to trust you and I want to hear your voice for my life. I want to hear what you have to say. I trust that your voice is the most important voice in my life and I want to hear it more than I've ever heard it before at all campuses right now, Kempsville, Suffolk, here at Western Branch, online. If that's you, don't miss out on what God would say for your life because of so many other voices that are speaking. Say, I want you, Jesus. Thank you. It's awesome. God sees your heart as you're lifting your hands. You can put your hands down. I want you, if you raise your hands, I want you to pray with me here this morning. You can repeat what I say out loud. All, all the others that are already in the room, you're already all in and you're already following Jesus. And you know, you know what? It's true for me. I want to hear his voice even more as well, even though I'm already following. I want to recognize it. I want to say, Jesus, speak. Let's pray this together. Say, Jesus, thank you for your love. Today, I want to know you more. I want to hear your voice more. I want to follow you completely. Jesus, speak. I am listening. And I believe as I hear your voice, my best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen.